See, in our text, Jesus said the thief, his purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. And when we hear that, you know what most of us think? We think, ah, the devil. The devil is a very bad devil. And we blame the devil for stealing and killing and destroying. And that's true, but that's not the whole truth. Because in verse 8, Jesus said this, there are thieves and robbers. There's more than one. So the devil is not the only one trying to take abundant life from you. For the fact is, the thief is anything that takes what you value, kills what you love, and destroys your life. It was a beautiful day in Germany. Everything was going smoothly at the Green home. Little four-year-old Travis Green was playing happily on the fourth floor of his family's house. There was no indication of any trouble, but tragedy was just about to befall the family. For as little four-year-old Travis Green played in his family's house on the fourth floor, he got close to the window, and then before anyone could stop him or grab him, he tumbled out the window, his little body spinning wildly as it fell, fell, fell to the ground. Travis' little body hit the ground with a thud, and his lifeless body lay on the pavement. The paramedics were called and doctors came. They did everything they could to bring Travis back to life, but it was too late. The doctor pronounced Travis Green dead on the scene. They covered his body with a sheet. Travis, his mother shouted. She rushed over and picked up the body. Jesus, she screamed. Jesus, she screamed again. I plead the blood of Jesus, the mother shouted. And suddenly, Travis's eyes opened, his heart started beating, his lungs started breathing, and Travis Green came back to life, raised by the power of the blood of Jesus. Today, Travis Green is a gospel singer and a pastor. He travels around the world telling people about the time when there was no way out, only Jesus. And if Travis Green were here, he would tell you what he tells people all over the world. When there was no other way, when there was no hope, when life was gone, when there was no possibility, Jesus Christ came and lifted him and brought him back to life. The doctors gave up hope. The medics turned their back and walked away. For you see, there is no medical facility in the world that can do anything for the lifeless. No matter how much the money, no matter how much the training, no medical professional in this world can raise the dead. But when there's no other way, there is Jesus. And the same is true for all of us today. In fact, all of mankind. For you see, the fact is man has fallen. It began in the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve sinned and they fell into sin and death. And the Bible says sin and death have spread to all men everywhere. For Romans 5, 12 says sin entered the world through one man and death through sin. And in this way, death came to all people because all sinned. And we're included in that for Romans 3, 23 says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And when man fell into sin, we lost our hope and lost our connection to God. We lost our soul and we lost our life. And nothing in this world can bring us back, only Jesus. But without him, the wages of sin is death. Without Christ, we're in despair. And man is always looking for a way out. Man is always trying to come up with a way to bring himself back to life. He created religion and sacrifices and rituals trying to solve the problem, but none of them worked. Man created excuses and intellectual arguments, but none of those bring us back to life. No matter what we do, we cannot save ourselves. That's why the coming of Jesus Christ is such good news. When Jesus came, he came to lift us. When Jesus came, he came to give us hope. He came to give us life. He came to turn us from death to life. For only Jesus can give us abundant life.
That's what we're going to discover in our sermon this morning. Our sermon is entitled, No Other Way, Just Jesus. But before we learn more, let's bow our heads and pray together. Almighty and everlasting creator of the universe, Jehovah God, our Father in heaven, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We ask in this holy moment that you will descend upon us by the power of your Holy Spirit and speak to each and every heart. Open our eyes to see the truth. Show us that there is no other way, just Jesus. We submit to you now. We bind every voice of the devil that would come to deceive or disturb or distract us. And in the name of the Lord Jesus, I loose the power of the Holy Spirit, the power to bring us light and life and love, the power to bring us to Jesus. We thank you by faith that at the end of the day, your name will be glorified and our lives will be transformed. In Jesus' name we pray, and everybody said, amen. I want to invite you to take a moment right now, join your faith with mine, put your hand on your chest and pray out loud after me. Just say, dear Jesus, speak to my heart, change my life, manifest your glory in me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Welcome to Agape House. We want you to know we love you and you have a friend at Agape House. If you believe it, say amen. But even better than that, we want you to know that you have the very best friend of all in God himself. Now that may surprise you because a lot of people think of God as the creator of the universe, but they don't think of him as a friend. A lot of us think of God as some power in the heavens we can run to when we have a problem, but we don't necessarily have a personal relationship with him. But the fact is God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to this earth to open up the way for all of us so that we can experience abundant life. Jesus came to connect us to God the Father. Jesus came to bring us back to our relationship with him so that we could enter into abundant life. Because when you connect with your creator, when you have a personal relationship with him and and become a part of God's family. It opens up abundant life. It's a better life, a life that is healthy and happy and whole. It's a life that's better than you can imagine, and it's only Jesus who can make this way for us. That's what Jesus himself claimed. So let's take a few minutes and look at the words of Jesus about himself and what he offers to us. And to help us do that, we printed sermon notes. They look like this. They're inside your bulletin. So go ahead and take the out and follow along with me as we discover three reasons why Jesus is the only way to abundant life. Now there at the top of your notes and on the screen ahead of you is our scripture text for today. It's the words of Jesus found in the gospel of St. John chapter 10 verses 7 to 11. It's on your notes, it's on the screen, but I believe God's word has the most impact when it's in our hearts and on our lips. So I'm going to invite everybody to read it out loud to Together with me. Are you ready? Read it like you're a radio preacher. Read it with feeling. Are you ready? Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Jesus said, I tell you the truth. I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me were thieves and robbers. Yes, I am the gate. Those who come in through me will be saved. They will come and go freely and will find good pastures. The thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd sacrifices his life for the sheep. May the Lord bless the reading of his word to your heart today in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Consider with me for a moment what Jesus is actually telling us. First of all, he's revealing his identity to us. He says, I am the gate. I am the good shepherd. And then he shows his love for us. He said, I've laid down my life so that you can have abundant life. And then he gives us a promise. When you come to me, when you pass through me, you will have liberty. You will have life. You will have love. You will have abundance. This is the plan of God for us. So let's break down these verses and discover three reasons Jesus is the only way to abundant life. And here's your first truth today. Only Jesus has the right plan to give you abundant life. Somebody say right plan. 
Listen again to Jesus' words in verses 7 and 10. He said, I tell you the truth, nubilio, I am the gate for the sheep. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. And understand what Jesus is telling us here. Another translation says it like this. My purpose is to give life in all its fullness, more and better life than you ever dreamed of. So your first step to entering the abundant life is to understand that God wants to give you abundant life. That's what Jesus tells us. He came to do. That's the purpose of his coming. His purpose was to provide us with a way into abundant life. You see, it has always been God's plan for us to experience abundant life. God chose us and loved us and his plan for each and every one of us, no matter who you are or where you came from, was that you would experience a better abundant life. That's what Ephesians 1, 4, and 5 tells us. Listen to the word of God. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. Before you were born, before your parents were born, before Ghana was a nation, before the worlds were created, God sat down and planned. He said, I'm going to create mankind. I'm going to make Amma and Kofi and Kwame and Kojo. I'm going to give them a path to connect with me and be members of my family. I'm going to lead them in the path that will take them to an abundant life because God loved us. He chose us and he decided long ago that he would adopt us and bring us to himself that we might experience abundant life. For you see, God loves you more than words can say. God loves you more than you've ever been loved by anyone before. For Psalm 36 says, Your unfailing love, O Lord, is as vast as the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches beyond the clouds. Your righteousness is like the mighty mountains. Your justice like the ocean depths. How precious is your unfailing love, O oh God. All humanity finds shelter in the shadow of your wings. And I'm here to tell you today that God loves you more than words can say. God loves you more than you can imagine. And when you come to him, Jesus, the gate to abundant life, you find shelter and rest and blessings in his arms. That's why I boldly declare to you that God has a plan for your life. God created you to be blessed. He created you to experience his presence. He created you to have a healthy, happy, better life than what man can give you. And I'm here to declare to you today that God wants you to have a right and a happy life when you follow his plan. The problem for most people is that we're not happy. We don't have an abundant life because we're not following God's plan. We're trying to chase the abundant life through another plan. Even though God loves us more than words can say it, even though God plans for us to have a happy life, we end up unhappy and miserable. And the reason is clear from Jesus' words. There are enemies to your abundant life. Just tell your neighbor, happiness has enemies. See, in our text, Jesus said, the thief, his purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. And when we hear that, you know what most of us think? We think, ah, the devil. The devil is a very bad devil. And we blame the devil for stealing and killing and destroying. And that's true, but that's not the whole truth. Because in verse 8, Jesus said this, there are thieves and robbers. There's more than one. So the devil is not the only one trying to take abundant life from you. For the fact is, the thief is anything that takes what you value, kills what you love, and destroys your life. Turn your notes over to page two and consider with me that the devil is not the only thief. Sometimes there are other people who are thieves. Sometimes there are other people who are trying to steal what you love and kill what you love and destroy your life. But even though the devil and the other people are there, the worst enemy we face is oftentimes ourselves. We are often the ones to blame for our own happiness because we continue to choose paths that don't lead us to the abundant life. We end up robbing ourselves of 
of happiness because we make choices that rob our lives of peace and love and joy. Most of us like to blame the devil and most of us like to blame other people. We blame the ante in the village or our mean boss. But the fact is we are responsible for our own choices and we have all sought the abundant life uh, with another plan and another path. Instead of coming to Jesus, we think we know better. We think we can figure it out for ourselves and use ways and means to get what we want. We think we have a better plan for abundant life. So we chase possessions and we chase power and we chase popularity and we chase pleasure. Oh, we chase pleasure, but we end up empty handed and broken hearted and lost. But the truth is, you always go astray when you look for another way. That's the lesson we can learn from Akwesi Adu Botre. He discovered it when he left Ghana for Canada seeking the abundant life. Surely life would be good in beautiful, prosperous, peaceful Canada. So he left these shores and left for Canada. No more doom sore, no more bad roads, no more poor pay and high prices, no more suffering, yay. And things certainly looked good for Equesi at first. He settled in the city of Toronto, Toronto, Canada, yay. He was able to start remitting money home to his wife and four children in Kumasi. His plan for abundant life was working out until it wasn't. Last month, on Saturday, February 17th, Akwesi was on his way to the bank in Toronto, Canada to remit money home to his wife and four children in Kumasi when he was shot and killed, killed on the streets of Toronto, Canada. And all too late, Akwesi learned that money can't buy abundant life. For the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 5.10, those who love money will never have enough. How absurd to think that wealth brings true happiness. Because you always go astray when you look for another way. That's what Annabelle discovered. She thought for sure she could work her way to an abundant life by working the streets. So she became a prostitute, selling her body to get to a better life. And so it was on Friday, September 8th last year, Annabelle hired a taxi from Kasua to a Wutu Breku to visit a client. However, when the taxi reached Triple X, Near Budaburam, a dispute arose between Annabelle and the taxi driver. Annabelle alleged that the taxi driver had engaged in sexual activity with her, but he'd refused to pay the agreed upon fee of 80 Ghana CDs. An eyewitness named Amasewa had to separate. Annabelle and the taxi driver as they fought in the middle of the roadway, but still tension persisted. Annabelle was determined she wanted her 80 Ghana, so she sat down on the road and blocked the taxi from going. She wanted her 80 Ghana CDs. But just then, a speeding driver in a tipper truck was coming from a Wutu Breku, and he ran into Annabelle and smashed her skull on the highway, and she died on the spot. Because you always go astray when you look for another way. That's why Proverbs 14 says, there's a way of life that looks harmless enough. Look again, it leads straight to hell. Sure, those people appear to be having a good time, but all that laughter will end in heartbreak. Because no matter how you scheme, no matter how you plan, no matter how you plot, there is no other path. No matter which way you choose, there is only one way to abundant life, and his name is Jesus. For he himself said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The only way to the Father is through me. Understand, Jesus did not say, I am one of many ways. I am the way, he said. He didn't say, you have a lot of choices, and you should consider me. He said, I'm the only way, the only 
only truth, the only life. I'm the only way to heaven. He's the only gate that can get us back to God and get us into the abundant life. He's the only one who was willing to pay the price, and he's the only one with the power. And that's our second truth today. Only Jesus has the power to give you abundant life. Listen to his words in verse 11. He said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd sacrifices his life for his sheep. And understand what Jesus is telling you today. He's saying, I know that this is the path you need. In fact, I'm so convinced of it. I was willing to lay down my life and sacrifice so that you could come back to God, so that you could be forgiven, so that you could be born again and you could enter into abundant life. For when he laid down his life, every enemy was defeated. Every thief was driven away. Every robber was dispelled. When Jesus came and shed his blood for us, he gave us the power to be born again. That's why Colossians 2.15 says, Jesus defeated the rulers and powers of the spiritual world. With the cross, he won the victory over them and led them away as defeated and powerless prisoners for the whole world to see. And I'm here to declare to you today that the blood of Jesus Christ has conquered every enemy. The blood of Jesus Christ has stripped the devil of his power. The blood of Jesus Christ has come to take you from death to life and bring you into the abundant life when you come back to God the Father. If you believe it, shout Jesus. For not only is the enemy defeated by the blood, but your sins are forgiven. Every barrier separating you from God, every bad thing you and I both have done is washed away by the blood. For Ephesians 1, 7 says, in him, that's Jesus, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of of God's grace. And when you're covered by that blood, your sins are forgiven and you escape death. That's the lesson we can learn from the amazing true story of a student from Uganda named Julius Isingoma. Julius and his fellow students were singing gospel hymns in their high school dormitory one night on Friday, June 16th last year. Suddenly, armed terrorists stormed their school compound. They came to the boys' dormitory, but the students had locked the doors, realizing they were in danger. When they couldn't open the door, Julius said, they hurled a bomb inside the dormitory and then used hammers and axes to break down the door. Julius was standing behind many of the students who'd formed a human shield around the door. But when the armed assailants broke in, Julius turned and fled. While the militants attacked the students, screams filled the air as the students were gunned down and beaten and hacked to death. Julius quickly ran and climbed to the top of a bunk bed. He reached up to the ceiling and tore out the wooden planks. He pulled himself up and climbed into the ceiling to hide. And from his secret location, he watched his colleagues being brutally murdered and hacked to death. The militants killed the students, and then they set fire to the mattresses. Julius quickly became overwhelmed by the smoke, and he lost his balance and dropped out of the ceiling. Julius Isingoma hit the floor with a thud and the noise of his body falling caused the terrorists to come back. And in that moment, Julius realized, I lay next to the bloodied bodies of my friends and thought very fast, he said. Then I smeared a lot of blood into my eyes, my ears, my mouth, my nose, and I lay still. When the terrorists saw Julius motionless, covered with blood. They assumed he was dead, and they left him. When they were gone, Julius got up, ran out of the building, scaled the school wall, ran to a compound for help. He was one of only six students in the whole school who survived the brutal attack. But Julius Isingoma is alive today because he was covered by blood. 
there's a powerful lesson for all of us in the true story of Julius Isangoma's survival in the face of near certain death. Just like Julius Isangoma, we're surrounded by darkness. We're surrounded by enemy forces and we have no power in our own strength to fight them off. Death is all around us and no one knows what will happen next in the world. There's no way for any of us to escape. But 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the Son of God, went to the cross and shed his blood. He laid down his life so that we could be covered by the blood. And when you're covered in the blood of Jesus, your sins are forgiven. When you're covered by the blood of Jesus, the enemy has no power over you. When you're covered by the blood of Jesus, you go from death to life. And when we come under his blood, we are protected. For a thousand may fall at our side and 10,000 at our right hand, but it will not come near the children of God who are covered by his blood. For revelation 12 11 says and they have defeated him by the blood of the lamb and by their testimony and I declare to you today it is God's plan for you to be covered in the blood and protected it's God's plan for the power of God to fill your life to overcome the works of darkness it is God's plan for your sins to be forgiven and covered by the blood so that you can experience reconnection with God peace joy and and love will come to you when you enter God's family. And that brings us to our third truth today about Jesus. Only Jesus is the path to abundant life. Listen to his words in verse 9. Jesus said, yes, I am the gate. Those who come in through me will be saved. Just tell your neighbor, through Jesus. Notice how Jesus says that the path is through him. You've got to connect to Jesus. You've got to come to Jesus. There's only one way to the Father, only one way to life, and it's through Jesus. He himself is the path. You don't come to the Father through a church. You don't come to the Father through saying prayers or having rituals. You don't come back to God the Father through a prophet. There's only one way back to God the Father, only one mediator between God and man, only one Savior who laid down his life, only one who gave his blood and sacrifice for you, and that is Jesus. When there is no other way, there is Jesus. Somebody shout Jesus. And in that truth, we need to understand today that there's a challenge for us. For Jesus is telling us, I provided what you need, but you've got to get up and come through me. You've got to get up and make a decision. You've got to step out and make a choice to enter through the gate he offers. God wants you to experience abundant life. He paid the price for you to experience abundant life. He has the power to deliver you and free you, but there's something you must do. You must come in through him. That's why Jesus said in John 6, I am the bread that gives life to people. Anyone who comes to me will never be hungry. Anyone who believes in me will never be thirsty. When anyone comes to me, I will never send that person away. And hear what Jesus is calling us to do. Believe in him. Come to him. Receive him. That requires choice. Requires your commitment. It doesn't happen automatically. It requires you to do something today to step forward and say, Jesus, I come to you. I receive you. I believe in you. In just a minute, I'm going to give you the opportunity to make that choice, and I'm going to pray for you. But first, let me tell you about the choice someone made just 10 days ago that led to life. On Thursday, March 7th, 17-year-old Musa Garba was in his school with his co-students in his hometown of Kariga, Nigeria. As Musa and his fellow students were studying, suddenly armed bandits stormed the compound and started shooting. We tried to run away, Musa said, but they chased us and caught us. They gathered us like cows into the bush. The bandits abducted more than 280 school children from Kariga, some of them as young as seven years of age. They forced the children out of the school compound and began pushing them to trek through the bush. Many of the children had not eaten breakfast. They were all thirsty because they had nothing to drink, and still yet they were oppressed and forced to march for miles 
But Musa kept looking for an opportunity to escape. And when he had a chance, he would secretly talk to his mates. Come on, let's escape. Let's make a run for it. Let's find a way out. But no one would agree. They were all too afraid. Under the bondage of oppression, they just kept marching on to their own death. But then as the sun was setting, Musa noticed his opportunity. He looked around to make sure no one was watching. And then he snuck off the past and path and dove into a grass heap. He laid perfectly still, and as the abductors and the students marched on, he was hidden in the grass until they'd gone. Once it was totally dark, Musa Garba got up on a different path and ran to a nearby village and got help. Musa Garba had been trapped and taken hostage. He was oppressed and unable to get free. But God provided Musa a miraculous way out, a path to freedom. It required Musa to make a choice. It required him to take a step of faith. It required him to fight fear and overcome opposition. But when he made the choice to live, he entered a new path and received a second chance. And the same is true for all of us. No matter what you've done, no matter where you come from, no matter what bondage you're in, no matter what addiction holds you, No matter what the devil has said to you, you can be free. God has made a path, a way out. It requires you to get up today and make a choice. It requires you to take a step. It requires you to overcome the fear. Don't worry what people will think. Say, I don't care about anybody else today. I'm coming to Jesus. He is the gate, the good shepherd. He has a plan for you to have abundant life. He has the power for you to have abundant life. And when you come and pass through him, he becomes the path to abundant life. That's why Jesus said in John 1.12, to all who received him, he gave the power to become sons of God to those who believed in his name. All across the auditorium, in the balcony, in the back, would you stand together with me right now, everybody? Would you just stand up in the balcony, in the back, on the sides? I'm going to take a moment and pray with you. I'm going to give you an opportunity to pray with me. Would you close your eyes and bow your head right now? If God is speaking to you, you want to come to Jesus, today is an opportunity for you to say, I believe in Jesus. I want to come to him. I'm clinging to him. I receive him. Would you just lift up your hands so I can see you? I want to pray for you right now. Thank you, my son. Thank you, my daughter. Thank you. God bless you. Everybody all across the balcony, the back, just raise your hand. This is your chance to say, Jesus, I receive you. I come to you. Your sins will be forgiven. The enemy's power will be broken. Now, everybody with your hand raised, I want to invite you to come and join me at the altar here. Would you just come, my son? Would you come right now, my daughter? Just come and join me so I can pray for you. Just come and stand here with me so we can pray together. Everybody with their hand raised, if you're here today and you say, I want to receive Jesus. I want to come to Jesus. I want to believe in Jesus. God's going to do something new in your life. He's going to do something miraculous. You can come from the balcony. We'll take a minute and wait for you. We'll wait for everybody and anybody because God is calling you today. This is your chance to break free. This is your chance to be liberated. This is your chance to pass through the gate into abundant life. Just come, everyone, from the back, from the side. Come and join us here today as we wait upon the Lord. Would you bow your head and pray with me right now all across the auditorium? Just lift up your voice and say, Lord Jesus, speak to us. Lord Jesus, move in us. Lord Jesus, come upon us today. We submit to you, Lord. We bind every voice of the enemy against us in the name of Jesus. God bless you, sir. God bless you. Right at the front, there's still room. Come on up, my son. Come right this way, my son. We're here for you. We're praying right now. Everybody in the crowd, would you pray? It's still opportunity. There's still opportunity. Thank you, my daughter. Thank you. God bless you. Come to the front. We receive you now. You're here to say, Jesus, I need you. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I want you. Come on, everybody. Help me pray right now. Pray that God will move. Pray that God will touch these blessed souls. Pray that God will touch these men and women today. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We praise you today. We worship you, Lord. Yes, we give you glory yes, and Lord. honor and yes, praise Lord. and thanksgiving yes, for your peace yes, and your Lord. joy yes, Lord. is here with us. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. 
in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Now listen, friends, this is a very simple thing. The Bible makes it clear it's not difficult. There's just some things you have to do. The Bible says first you have to admit you're a sinner and ask God to forgive you. I was a sinner and I asked God to forgive me. I did a lot of bad things. I did stupid things. But God has forgiven me. He will forgive you. First John 1 9 says if we confess our sins to him, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. And then secondly, you just believe in him. For the Bible says in Acts 16 31, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Believing is just say, Lord, I believe you are who you said you are. And then third, commit yourself to God. Acts 2.38 says, each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. When you turn to God today, he turns to you. So I ask every head to bow, every eye closed, and all across the church, everybody, would you repeat this prayer out loud after me? Dear God. Dear God. I come to you. I come to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I ask you to save me today. I ask you to save me today. I confess. I confess that I've sinned against that you. That I've sinned against you. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy to be called your child. To be called your child. Please forgive me. Please forgive me of all my sins. Of all my sins. I believe. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. That Jesus Christ is your son. I believe. I believe that He died on the cross. That He died on the cross and rose from the dead. And rose from the dead. So that I might be. Saved. Saved. So that I, might be saved. I ask you, I ask you to, come into my heart to come into my heart by the power of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit and, make me born again. and make me born again. I give my life to you, I give my life to and, you. Promise to obey and promise to obey you and follow you. And follow you. Save me from sin. Save me from sin. Deliver, me from the devil. Deliver me from the devil. Heal me and fill me today. Heal me and fill me today. I thank you now by faith. I thank you now by faith. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift up every man and woman, boy and girl here at the front. I pray for everyone who prayed with me right now that your Holy Spirit will come in and fill them with your love and your presence. We come to you, Jesus. We believe in you, Jesus. We receive you, Jesus. You are the gate. And today we take a step and enter into the family of God. We enter into abundant life by faith. Deliver your children from the devil. We break every power of darkness. We break every power of sin and we cover them with the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus over their life. We thank you by faith. You've taken them from death to life. Abundant life through the power of your blood. We bless them today in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen.